If you're familiar with my videos so far, you know that I'm a big fan of artificial light, particularly with flash, and I also love teaching it. But I know that's not the case for everyone. And in certain cases, there are those who just don't care to learn flash or are familiar with flash already, but wanna get into continuous lighting. Now, if that's you, then I wanted to make this series of videos for you. Yes, you heard that right. This video is a first of a three-part series that is going to explore continuous lighting for food photography. And hopefully by the end of the series, you can confidently navigate your way into knowing the pros and cons of using a continuous light, knowing what to look for in a continuous light, and ultimately creating awesome images with continuous light. So in this video, I'm first gonna talk about the key areas in which these two types of artificial light differ. In the second video, I'm going to go into detail about what you should be paying attention to when shopping around for a continuous light. And then thirdly, I'm going to walk you through how to create a unique and professional food photograph with continuous lighting. So if you're into that, then stick around. Okay, so the first thing I wanna say, generally speaking, is that the principles of light, like the inverse square law, the different qualities and sizes of light, will still apply whether you're using constant light or flash. It's when we get into specific areas of our workflow where we start to see differences in these two types of light. And so the first difference is how we see it with our eyes. I know, I know that, I know that's, I know that, yeah, I know that sounds pretty obvious. Like that's a pretty self-explanatory, right? A continuous light is, well, it's always on and we can see it for as long as we look at it. A flash on the other hand is only visible for the fraction of a second that it's on. And that's it. All right, and then the second difference is the white balance. The more common lights that you will see come in either one of two color temperatures, either tungsten or daylight balanced. And depending on the conditions that you will be shooting in, you can choose between either a tungsten colored light or a daylight balanced light. I do not own a tungsten colored LED light myself, but the Godox SL60 series light, for example, the tungsten balance light has a Y in the name. And I think it's to indicate that it's, you know, yellow. And the daylight balance has, well, the W, which I think means white light. And then some lights come with being able to adjust the color temperature so that you can change between the two. Now, I happen to have an example of this with my Profoto B10. And as you can see, I can change the temperature of the light simply by turning the dial. Daylight, tungsten, daylight, tungsten, daylight. Flashes, again, on the other hand, are different in that they come in just one specific color temperature, which is around 5,500 degrees Kelvin. And to be able to change the color temperatures on flashes, we need to attach filters on them called gels. But other than that, they pretty much all come in just one color temperature. Now, another difference is in the brightness. In general, a flash or a strobe will put out much, much more brightness than a continuous light. The more common LEDs that you might already be somewhat familiar with, these are typically great for lighting subjects indoors or you know, relatively small food setups and, and so forth. But in situations where you have existing indoor lighting like lamps or overhead tungsten lighting, which are more difficult to control in places like restaurants or any other public place, these, these types of light can end up casting warm light or unwanted light in your scene. So, in cases like these where we'd have no choice but to cut out all of the ambient light with our camera settings, that'd be kind of difficult to do because we'd also be cutting out our main light source as that's also part of our ambient light. And unless we have enough power in that light source to override the camera settings, we're kind of stuck with just including the existing light in the scene. But, do you know what I'm gonna say next? Do you know what I'm gonna say? You already know what I'm gonna say. With flash, on the other hand, we simply have enough power to overpower most types of ambient light. The only caveat, however, is that you can only overpower the ambient light for a split second, which isn't that much big of a deal. And then lastly, number four, there's creative control. Probably the most common area that these two types of light differ is in how we can manipulate our exposures for creative purposes, especially in those beautiful action shots like pours or splashes. 
Now, when using a continuous light source, your shutter needs to be pretty fast in general in order to capture or freeze the action. But as a consequence of that, you would also need a very bright constant light to compensate for that fast shutter speed. Because when you're cranking up that shutter speed, you're also allowing less time for light to enter that sensor. Now with flashes, again, on the other hand, it's very different because essentially it's the flash that freezes the action. Now, what do I mean by that? Remember that with a continuous light, I said it was your shutter speed that helps you control your exposure and is what captures the motion. When using flash, your shutter speed won't do much to the exposure because they fire at a speed or rate that is typically faster than your shutter speed. So again, it's actually the flash itself is what ends up freezing the action. But for now, all you need to remember is that when you get into areas such as high-speed photography, flashes begin to offer advantages over continuous light. And I know at this point that I may seem like I'm listing things that favor flash over continuous lighting, but as you'll see in the next few videos, continuous lighting does offer some great advantages when it comes to creating stills. Or if you're getting into video, then continuous light is obviously a really great option. All right, so there you have it. The four main areas where a flash or a strobe will differ from a constant light. It's visibility to the eye, color temperature, brightness output, and uses for creative control. In the next video of this series, I'm going to cover what you should be looking for when choosing a constant light so that you can make an informed decision on which one to get. Now, if you have any questions regarding what I talked about in this video, please feel free to comment down below. I'll be more than happy to answer your question. Other than that, thanks for taking the time to watch this video and I'll see you in the next one.